As you can see, Angular 17 was just released. This is why in this video you will learn all features of Angular 17 that you must know and start using. So first of all, inside Angular 17 we are getting a new logo. Additionally to that, we are getting a new website with all documentation. As you can see here, I am on angular.dev and this is a brand new website, which they really implemented much better than previous documentation. I wasn't actually a huge fan of Angular official documentation previously, because it was often really dry and difficult for beginners to grasp the concept. I already checked quite a lot of docs on the new website and I can say that they are structured and written much better. First of all, what we are getting here are documentation, which actually means here you can find all guides on Angular concepts. Like for example, we are interested in dependency injection, here we can get some general understanding, but also nice examples. And it is really written step by step, so you can grasp the concept easier. Another thing that we are getting on the new website is called tutorials, and here you can click on learn Angular in browser. And the main idea is that you can change the code and learn some things directly in browser by having editor here on the right, you are updating code and it is directly being changed on screen here on the right. So you are clicking here on the arrow, you are jumping to components in Angular. You are getting some documentation like how to write a template or how to add styles and on the right inside the code you see exactly how it works with the result here. Also, you can access here a console and a terminal, which looks quite awesome. Also here on the left, we can click on playground and here we are getting a full-blown Angular application inside our browser. As you can see, there are lots of components here, we can write everything in main.ts, we also have some HTML and CSS and everything that we are changing will be built here on the right, we are getting full access to the console and the terminal and we can easily debug what we have. The main idea is that you can jump on testing some things inside Angular without need to set up a whole project in your local environment. And last but not least here is a reference to different stuff inside Angular that you might want to use. But I really prefer to use search just here and type what I need. For example, I am interested in signals, I am typing signal and here is the documentation regarding Angular signal and how to create them. And previously I made a video on Angular 16 features and just to remind you there were two features which were in development preview. And first and most important feature was signals, it was a new concept of the state inside Angular and now it is not in development preview anymore, it is stable and you can use it inside Angular 17. Additionally to that, inside Angular 16 we got ES build, which allows to speed up the building of our applications. And previously it was also in development preview and now it is there by default inside Angular, you don't need to change anything. And as you can see here in the builder, we are getting a line Angular dev kit build Angular application. And this line already uses ES build under the hood. But enough talking, obviously you want to see how we can set up our new Angular 17 application and what features we are getting inside. I am sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. As you can see here in the official git repository, we are getting Angular of version 17.01. And I don't really want to break ng on your machine if you are using Angular 15 or 16 for example, this is why we can leverage npx to switch to different Angular version. This is why we can write here npx minus p, then angular slash cli add 17 ng version for example. And this command will install the CLI package of Angular 17, but it won't break your global Angular CLI if you installed it previously. As you can see here, we are getting Angular 17 and we can directly use it through this command. This is why what I want to execute here is ng-new minus minus directory dot and this will create a new project of Angular 17 inside my current directory. I'm hitting here enter and we're getting a question, what name would you like to use for new workspace, let's say app. 
After this we are getting what style sheet we want, it is CSS. And now we are getting a really nice question that we didn't get previously. Do you want to enable server-side rendering and static site generation? As you remember previously inside Angular, by default we didn't get server-side rendering, but there was an additional possibility through Angular Universal to set up Angular on the backend. Now Angular decided to make it better, we can set up it out of the box, and additionally we are not using Angular Universal anymore, but we are using a new Angular slash SSR package, which does exactly that, and hopefully in a better way. Here I will hit no, because we don't need SSR for our project. And as you can see, after running npm run start, my project was started. Most importantly, I can really feel that it was built much faster than previous version, because now it is leveraging ES build by default exactly with this line inside our configuration in generated project. Additionally to that, Angular 17 is generating for us a project which is fully standalone, as in gym modules are optional, even in Angular 16, now our project is by default without modules. This is why here we are getting main.ts, which uses bootstrap application, and it loads not a module, but an app component. Now inside our app, we are getting app component, which is just a standalone component, which is being rendered on the screen. And additionally, here we have our app config, where we are packing all our providers and configuration. Which actually means I don't see any sense to use ng modules in new applications. And as you can see, our starting application also is looking differently. Now let's look on some new features of Angular 17, which is being called Control Flow. The main idea is that they changed how we are writing code inside HTML. What I am talking about. I want to jump here inside App Component, and I want to remove everything except of Router Outlet. Now here inside our app, I want to create a list of users to render. This is why here we can create an interface user interface. And let's say that we have inside ID, which is a string, then name, which is also a string, and role, which is a string. And in order to store some data inside our application, we can leverage signals from Angular 16. This is why here we can create our users, and this is a signal. And the initial value here will be an empty array. Now here we can provide that this is an array of our user interface. Now inside I want to pack some data. Let's provide here a user with id1, name foo, and role developer. Now I want to do exactly the same, but create user2 and user3, and it will be bar and buzz with role admin and QA. So what we want to do now, we want to render this list inside HTML. And previously we used for that a directive which is called ng4, but we can do it differently now. We can write here add 4 and in round brackets user of users, again round brackets because this is a signal, then track dollar $index, and inside we are rendering our markup, for example a div with a user, and it will be user.name. As you can see in browser, the list of users was rendered, but most importantly here we didn't create a new div and we didn't write ng for loop. Here we are using add for, and this is a new Angular 17 syntax, which is called control flow, in order to write loops inside our markup. And what Angular team is saying, that this new control flow reduces the need in using structural directives, which can be unnecessary complex. I didn't really see that in G4 is a necessary complex, but this is what we are getting now. Additionally, what we can do in our for loop, we can provide here one more add, and it will be empty. And inside we can write some markup, for example, div, we don't have anything. As you can see on screen, this div was not rendered, because our list is not empty. But if I'm jumping inside our TS file and remove all our records, we are getting we don't have anything because our list is empty. This is a really nice sugar because we don't need to write additional logic and we are packing together our for and empty construction. Now what I want to do, I want to create a user inside app component. So let's create here a user and assign one of the users in our signal, for example the last one. Now let's jump inside the HTML and we can write here an if condition. And we won't use here ng if, but we use here at if operator. And we can write, okay, if user role equals developer, 
then we want to render here a div with text developer. Then we can write else option, and here will be user role equals admin. Then we want to render inside admin. In other case, we have one more condition else, and here we want to render div with text QA inside. As you can see in browser, after our list, we rendered QA, because inside our user, we rendered the second element. I can jump here and change this, for example, to zero, and now on screen, we're getting a developer string. So now you know how we're writing for and if loop, but we also have a switch, and it is working in exactly the same way. We're writing here at switch, for example, for user role, and this is a string, and now inside we can write cases, and here will be case for developer. In this case, we want to render inside developer, and then we will have two more cases for admin and for QA. As you can see in browser, it works in exactly the same way, but we used here switch case construction. And the last feature that we got to speed up our application a lot is called defer. And what defer does, it can render your content later or render a placeholder for it if you are loading that, which actually means you can skip rendering parts of your application and only show them when some event happens. For example, we successfully loaded an API call or we hovered on that element or this element appeared on screen. This is how we can do that. We can write here defer and inside just div defer. As you can see here, I am reloading the page, and you can see that all the content does not blink, but defer blinks. Why is that? Because it waits for the whole page to be loaded, and only then it starts to load this div. Additionally to that, defer markup will be packed in additional file, which will be loaded later, and will make the initial chunk also smaller. And together with defer, we can use things like loading, and here inside I want to write div with text loading. Here we can also use placeholder. And the last one is error. So here let's render an error, and inside placeholder will be a div placeholder. What we can write inside placeholder is, for example, minimum 150 milliseconds, and inside loading after 150 milliseconds, and minimum is 150 milliseconds which actually means when we are loading the page, as you can see, there was a placeholder for 150 milliseconds, and then we see our defer block with the loaded content, which actually means we can use placeholder to render some skeleton before your real data loaded. And you don't need to build for this some additional divs, you can simply create some views where the content is being loaded later. Which actually means, let's say you have an API call, which is for one second. First of all, there will be a placeholder. After this, there will be a loading indicator, if it takes too long. And only then, after an API call is there, we will render that block with real markup. And additionally, here is the error. If our API call for some reason fails, then we will render this block. And this is all in the single construction, which is quite readable. And now several words about triggers of defer. Here by default, what we are getting inside is on idle. So I wrote here on idle, and it doesn't do anything. This is the default behavior, which actually means this block will be rendered only after the full page will be rendered. We don't need to write that, this is the default behavior. But there are other options, and the most popular probably is viewport, which actually means we are rendering this element only after it comes to viewport. Let's check this out. I made my console bigger, and now defer word is outside of viewport. And now here inside elements, we can open our body, and inside our application, you can see that we are getting developer, developer, but here is our placeholder and nothing is rendered in that block because it is not visible on the screen. But if I'm scrolling here and it is in the view, you can see that we directly got here defer and this block was loaded. Which actually means it really helps us to make our applications faster because the blocks outside of the viewport won't be rendered at all. And actually, if for some reason you missed really important features of Angular 16, like for example signals, required inputs, or other features, make sure to check this video also.